Sup, chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is nova and you're all having a preem week. So, from time to time, I get questions that don't really have a clear answer based on any scientific research. And since this channel is, of course, science-based, I sometimes ignore questions like that, or I'll just admit there isn't enough research to give a definitive answer. One such question, which I always felt didn't have enough research to answer, is the question as to whether or not DHT causes an itchy scalp. This is an interesting question, and it is one people keep asking about in the comment section. It also seems to be a popular question on Reddit. The idea is that DHT doesn't just cause hair loss, it also causes itchiness of the scalp. We know that people with androgenic alopecia have increased levels of DHT in their scalp, and apparently a lot of people with androgenic alopecia have itchy scalps. So. Maybe DHT itself causes its itch. It's definitely a question worth exploring, hence why we are here today. But it goes beyond this. The Reddit post claimed that there is a correlation between the amount of itch in the scalp and the severity of androgenic alopecia, and that suppression of the itch, or lack of suppression of the itch with finasteride, can predict the success or failure of treatment. One of the Reddit posts notes that many doctors don't buy into the concept that DHT causes an itchy scalp, and that these doctors are skeptical because there aren't research studies on it. But evidently, that's just because doctors are ignorant because they don't read Tressless, which is obviously where all the best hair loss research in the world comes from. Well, normally, I'd keep out of a debate where there is not much research on a particular topic, but it turns out to my great surprise, there actually is some science behind this subject. So let's dig in and go as balls deep as we possibly can on this subject and find out once and for all if our itchy scalps are a way of our hair follicles trying to communicate with us. The questions are as follows. Does DHT cause scalp itch? And if so, does this correlate with the severity of hair loss? And does it go away if the nasteride is working? Well, let's first dispose of some confounding factors that might be obfuscating this whole issue. First of all, there are other scalp conditions that can coexist with androgenic alopecia and that can also cause a scalp itch. For example, seborrheic dermatitis, which is basically dandruff, can be very itchy. There are also bacterial or fungal scalp infections that can also cause an itch. So clearly, some people with an itchy scalp can have the itch due to conditions other than androgenic alopecia. We also know that certain shampoos can dry out or irritate the scalp and cause itching. This is especially true with ketoconazole shampoos like Nizoral that a lot of hair loss sufferers use. Treatment with topical minoxidil can also cause scalp irritation, usually not due to the minoxidil itself, but rather due to the carrier solution, which is either the propylene glycol or the alcohol within the carrier. Switching to foam-based minoxidil, which has no propylene glycol and less alcohol than standard minoxidil, minoxidil solution can help prevent an itchy scalp. There are also some propylene glycol free minoxidil solutions available like lipogain. So it's likely that some cases of scalp itch in people with androgenic alopecia are due to other conditions or due to topical shampoos or medications. Also, the correlation between itching and hair fall may not be related to DHT levels because scratching the scalp itself can lead to traction alopecia where the trauma of constantly scratching and pulling on your hair can cause temporary hair loss. So all these factors confound the question as to whether DHT alone causes scalp itch and whether the amount of scalp itch correlates with DHT levels and the progression of androgenic alopecia. But let's not dismiss this idea as bro science just because it's on Reddit and because there are confounding factors. As bad as Reddit usually is, not everything on it is complete broccoli. So let's give this theory a chance. We can first start by turning to this thorough review article on scalp itch which comes from Providence, Rhode Island, Miami, Florida, and Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Here we get confirmation beyond the Tressless subreddit that scalp itch is associated with androgenic alopecia, but at the same time, the article implies that maybe it is because patients with androgenic alopecia frequently have associated seborrheic dermatitis. The article lists all the causes of scalp itch, and there are many causes as you can see in this table here. Androgenic alopecia is listed as a cause, but unfortunately, the article doesn't go into the mechanism of scalp itching in androgenic alopecia, and it doesn't mention DHT at all. So we need to look further to get more clues on whether or not DHT causes scalp itch. That brings us to this article right here that is titled, quote, Functional Analysis of the Stratum Corneum of Scalp Skin, Studies in Patients with Alopecia Areata and Androgenetic Alopecia, unquote. 
In this article, the authors were interested in looking at different properties of scalp skin and compared these to skin on the face and skin on the forearm. What's interesting, though, is that they looked at subjects with both androgenic alopecia and another form of hair loss called alopecia areata. And in particular, they compared the properties of the scalp in the frontal and parietal regions with the lateral and occipital regions. They called these the androgen-sensitive regions where male pattern baldness occurs and the androgen-insensitive regions where it usually doesn't occur. These areas would correspond with areas where there are higher DHT levels and lower DHT levels, though they didn't actually measure scalp DHT. What the investigators found, though, was that the androgen-sensitive areas had a higher content of lipids or fats than the androgen-insensitive areas. They felt that the high level of lipids was due to sebum secreted by the sebaceous glands under the influence of androgens. Well, it makes sense that higher DHT levels would lead to more sebum production in scalp areas prone to androgenic alopecia because we know that androgens, including the trash hormone DHT, are a factor in causing acne. One of the factors causing acne is the increase in sebum production that occurs with puberty when both testosterone and DHT levels skyrocket. So, is sebum production responsible for the DHT itch? Well, this article looks in depth into the mechanisms behind scalp itch and in particular looked at the association between sebum and scalp itch. It turns out that sebum has both itch protective and itch inducing mechanisms. In sebum, there are free fatty acids that can form a protective layer against bacteria and fungi. However, at the same time, some of these free fatty acids are highly irritating to the skin. In addition, there is a species of yeast called Malazesia that lives on the skin and is usually harmless. It is present in over 90% of people. However, Malazesia also breaks down sebum to free fatty acids that could be irritants, especially if you have excessive sebum production that might occur with high DHT levels in the scalp. So, all this really implies that there indeed might be a link between higher DHT levels in the scalp and excessive sebum production that might cause itching and even seborrheic dermatitis. However, there is a lot of individual variation in sebum production in the skin, so it is completely possible that some people with androgenic alopecia would get DHT itch, while others might think it just sounds like crazy bro science. Personally speaking, I haven't really noticed it myself, although I do believe people when they tell me that they have both androgenic alopecia and an itchy scalp, and I do think there might be a link between scalp itchiness and DHT levels. So that leaves us with a question as to whether DHT itch is affected by a 5-AR blocker that suppresses DHT like finasteride. Can you tell if finasteride is working by whether or not your scalp itches? Well, that brings us to a very interesting study by Julianne Imperato McGinley. If that name sounds familiar, it's because she is the investigator who first described people living in the Dominican Republic who turned out to lack the type 2 5-AR isoenzyme from birth. These men lacking the type 2 5-AR isoenzyme had low levels of DHT and the key finding was that they never went bald and they never developed enlarged prostates. This was way back in 1974 and this study led to the development of finasteride which predominantly blocks the 5-AR type 2 isoenzyme. So all of us owe Julianne a great deal of gratitude as her research is the reason finasteride exists. In her more recent article from 1993, she and her co-investigators decided to look at C production in different groups of people. One group was just normal people, and another group was people with complete androgen insensitivity syndrome. These are people who are born with XY chromosomes like males, but develop as females because they are totally insensitive to androgens like Jason Blaha. The other groups looked at were people with congenital type 2 5-AR enzyme deficiency. In other words, people with the same type of problem she originally studied in 1974. Finally, she also looked at a group of men on finasteride for prostate enlargement. She looked at overall SIBA production in all these different groups. This chart shows some of the results. The vertical axis of the graph is a sebum score which correlates with sebum production. Not surprisingly, sebum production was virtually non-existent in children before adolescence because their androgen levels are naturally Naturally very low. Sebum was not present in people with complete androgen insensitivity syndrome as well, which is shown in the graph with the table adult AI. Normal adult males and females had sebum production, but so did males lacking the type 2 5-AR isoenzyme shown as adult MPH. So it looks like sebum production is not dependent on the type 2 5-AR isoenzyme. Further evidence for this is that finasteride did not lower sebum production compared with placebo. Once again, finasteride is a pretty specific type 2 5-AR isoenzyme enzyme blocker, and the reason that it works against androgenic alopecia is that the hair follicles contain predominantly the type 2 5-AR isoenzyme. So, 
What the investigators concluded from the study is that sebaceous glands don't contain the type 2 5-air isoenzyme. Instead, they contain the type 1 isoenzyme that finasteride only has a negligible effect on. This research was later confirmed by studies using the technique called immunostating, which is a very sensitive technique for identifying different types of proteins like isoenzymes. Using this technique, no type 1 5-air isoenzymes were found in the hair follicles. However, there was evidence of massive amounts of type 1 one isoenzyme in the sebaceous glands. So my takeaway from this is that while it is possible that there is a correlation between sebum production and androgenic alopecia in some people that could account for the dreaded DHT itch, I don't think you can use the effect of finasteride on that itch to predict whether or not you will respond to finasteride in terms of hair growth because as I stated before, finasteride doesn't really affect the type 1 5-air enzyme. It is more specific to the type 2 enzyme which is the enzyme which creates DHT in the hair follicles that causes hair loss. The itch seems to be more related to the type 1 5-air isoenzyme enzyme and hair loss from androgenic alopecia is due to the type 2 5-air isoenzyme. So finasteride won't do anything at all for this DHT itch. That's unfortunate, but it should also tell you that just because your scalp is itchy, it doesn't mean finasteride isn't working since we can confirm that the itch is caused by the type 1 isoenzyme, which finasteride doesn't influence. So... You might be thinking that if finasteride doesn't stop the DHT scalp itch, then maybe dutasteride would, since unlike finasteride, dutasteride does have an effect on suppressing the type 1 5-air isoenzyme. In fact, it is 100 times more potent than finasteride in blocking the type 1 5-air enzyme. In theory, it might help, and someone who uses finasteride who has an infuriating scalp itch might consider switching to dutasteride, but in truth, we don't have any data confirming or denying this hypothesis. It might help, but it is special speculative at this point. So if the scalp DHT itch is really just related to sebum production, then what we're talking about is really just a form of seborrheic dermatitis. So maybe the way to treat this DHT scalp itch is not through finasteride usage, but rather by using traditional treatments for seborrheic dermatitis, such as ketoconazole shampoos or shampoos containing other helpful compounds like selenium, pyrithione, zinc, or coal tar. In extreme cases, even topical or injectable corticosteroids might help. Another treatment that could help would be azelic acid, since that compound is a potent inhibitor of the type 1 5-air isoenzyme. Because of this, the drug is sometimes prescribed for the treatment of seborrheic dermatitis, so this might be the ideal solution if your itchiness is caused by DHT. It's worth also mentioning that azelic acid is sometimes hyped up as a hair loss treatment, but it has never been proven effective for this, and that is likely because its type 2 5-air inhibiting properties are too weak to fight hair loss. I definitely think it's a good way to treat the scalp itch you may experience while on finasteride, but it should never be used as an actual hair loss treatment because it isn't. If you have significant and scalp itch that doesn't respond to any of these treatments, then I would recommend seeing a dermatologist because like I mentioned before, a lot of scratching will only irritate the skin further and might cause traumatic hair loss. A dermatologist could potentially prescribe something more potent like corticosteroids. So. Just to summarize all this, I think despite my initial skepticism, I am now a firm believer that an itchy scalp can be associated with androgenic alopecia and DHT. So you could consider this yet another reason that DHT is a trash hormone that needs to be destroyed. The DHT scalp itch doesn't happen to everyone, and people shouldn't instantly assume that their itchy scalp is necessarily caused by DHT. Since DHT scalp itch is more related to the type 1 5-air enzyme, it doesn't necessarily correlate with the severity of androgenic alopecia. Alopecia. Also, since finasteride doesn't influence the type 1 5-air isoenzyme, I don't think you can use the presence of the scalp itch on finasteride to measure how well it is working against hair loss. It is a totally separate issue. Oftentimes, the DHT scalp itch is probably just a form of seborrheic dermatitis, or it can possibly be an irritation from topical minoxyl or any other topical you're applying to your scalp. Get it checked out by a dermatologist if it's severe, but let's be clear here, Chooms. DHT absolutely can cause scalp itch, but but the scalp itch is not correlated with the severity of androgenic alopecia or a metric to use to assess your response to finasteride. You can have an itchy scalp and still be a great responder to finasteride. Scalp itch is caused by the trash hormone DHT, but it requires a separate treatment from finasteride. So just keep that in mind, Shums. So. I hope that was all helpful. I mean, I definitely learned something myself researching all of it, so I appreciate you guys encouraging me to cover this topic. So, see you all next time, my fellow hair loss witchers. God bless.